So right now we will have an online lecture. Today, Vinay Kumar and Chandana will tell us a little bit more about auto keywords generation in robot framework using, using machine learning algorithm. A little words about our today speakers. Vinay, outside of work, he's a singer and composer of poems in Kannada language, and he has received several awards in the area of social service, animal welfare category, involved in various cultural activities, which were held at the office's premises as well. Chandana, she started as a full stack developer in Python in Nokia 2014, currently working as a technical leader in mobile networks domain. As an automation enthusiast, she developed libra libraries to support various technologies in robot framework. She's focused on efficiency and effectiveness. She designed and implemented new automation methodologies. Experienced in developing of many tools involved in technologies like AI, ML, UI development and web development to support business processes. Although they can't see us right now, please welcome them on the lecture. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so today we are going to discuss about the topic auto keywords generation in robot framework using machine learning algorithm. So as part of this topic, we will be having introduction on AAML and some kind of steps involved and types of machine learning and uh, which algorithm suits to this particular uh, purpose. Uh, we have introduction of that NLP and we also have introduction of robot framework and why do we need to have this particular tool? So basically we have a lot of sof uh, software products available where we need a lot of features involved into it, lot of software enhancements, corrections, modification and deletion. So a lot of features need uh, to be tested thoroughly. So we call it as a regression testing. So where manual testers need a lot of efforts to perform the regression testing. So we have to automate those kind of regression test cases to be a stable and repeatable. So for every release, whenever a multiple features has been added, so testers have to have a knowledge on automation, automation to write the test scripts. So the test scripts can be executed with multiple data. So each particular scenario has its own data where we write as test steps involved into it and we create as test scripts. So how do we process the test scripts? So we have a framework. So framework is set of guidelines or rules used to create and design the test scripts. So using that particular framework, we deploy and execute the test cases and actual product. So for this, to need, we need a proficiency in automation to write a particular test scripts. So in, in order to uh, have this purpose, what we are going to solve this purpose with this particular solutions. So here we are going to use artificial intelligent machine learning and neural networks. So let's have an introduction about these three topics. So what is an artificial intelligence? So it has a defined program that exhibits cognitive ability similar that as a human being. So it can mimic, computer can mimic our human behavior. So what is a machine learning? It enables the machine to learn itself. We don't need to program here. So it, it has the ability to learn by itself. So we here we create a data sets where the machine will learn according to the data sets and it processes accordingly. So the next, we have a technique where it is a part of ML that behaves as a neurons in a brain. So it is just like a neural networks. So that technique we call it as a deep learning. So let's have small talk about the machine learning, why we need a machine learning. So we have a lot of data available today. So we have a machines processing such kind of data. So for example, if we have a, if you take a stock market, so that is, uh, we can discover the future value of a company's stock 
and other financial assets traded on an exchange. So even for the call records and a page searches, so a lot of data can be processed. It also helps in technologically aiding decision making, like for example, cancer detection, credit analysis, etc. So also it has an ability in the neural networks where it does the image processing, where you can remove the noises of the image. So let's have an overview of machine learning in detail. So this is we have an a artificial intelligence layered mechanism. So first, artificial intelligence. So then deep le machine learning and a deep learning. So machine learning and a deep learning are part of this artificial intelligence. So machine learning requires a rule-based techniques and expert system to process as the output. So the next is the planning. So for example, when a project has been assigned, we need a lot of resources to be allocated to a particular project to be successful. So in that case, we will be having like software developers, testers, architects, so many people involved into it. So there is an algorithm where you can actually plan efficiently using some kind of artificial intelligence. The next comes natural language understanding. The name itself identifies that whatever the human language we speak, that we call it as a natural language natural language. So the artificial intelligence we are providing to a computer where it can understand our natural language, process it and results the output. Say for example, we have a chat boards like where you can send a queries and you can get the response accordingly. So on one more is a robotics where you provide artificial intelligence to the robot to think like a human when you send a command and what the robot does it. So that's where we use an artificial intelligence over there. So when it comes to the wireless picture, so it has some channel optimizations, uh, some kind of uh, uh, power energy savings. So those are some, some scenarios where we might use this artificial intelligence. The next coming to perceiving sounds and objects. So for example, uh, we have a cat and a dog. So how do you identify it based on sound? Like say cat says meow and dog say bow bow. So with this kind of sound, we identify it as a cat or a dog. The same intelligence will be provided to the computer to actually identify what is a dog or a, what is a cat. And the next comes the problem solving and learning. So it has an, its own intelligence where it solves the problem by itself and also learns the problem accordingly what the solution has been provided. So next is the types of machine learning. We have three types of machine learning. One is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. So supervised learning, is basically mostly with the labeled data. So what do you mean by labeled data? It has some kind of a tags or a names or an ID, some number. So we label it certain data. So that kind of data is part of this supervised learning. So and we get the accurate data, accurate uh, uh, results as well when you go for a supervised learning. Say for example, uh, where we can use this supervised learning. So nowadays, we are having mobile phones with the face recognition apps. So it's a bioinformatics. So where it has a labeling of your fingerprints or a face, so all the labels will be provided. So your app application or your phone get unlocks by your face recognition. So those things, examples, comes under the supervised learning. And also we have a speech recognition. Like uh, uh, we, we keep using Google Assistant and uh, Siri, so where it works only on the voice. So based on the voice commands, it replay you back or it does the things, whatever you order it. So that is one more example for this uh, uh, supervised learning. So next is unsupervised learning. So here in unsupervised learning, we don't have the labeling of data. So what for? Uh, we can take some example here, unsupervised. For example, uh, we, we do a lot of shopping in Amazon. So in Amazon, when you do a shopping, it shows that, okay, uh, these are products bought together. So how do is that? How do you get those things? So with this kind of learning, so it will actually uh, 
uh, shows you with, without any labeling it it prepares it won't cluster pattern accordingly it will advise you okay these are the frequently bought together and it will advise you to for the further shopping so that is what one example for this unsupervised learning so the next is reinforcement learning so this is like the learning it takes the decision on its own so out uh, it, it it solves a particular kind of problem where decision making is sequential and the goal is a long term say for example we have lot of mobile games available so for each particular game so when you play it you get a result where it shows you the rankings say you are ranked 1 you are ranked 2 so on what basis it takes its own decision it learns itself and it provide you the reward accordingly so and even robotics also uses uh, reinforcement learning so what are the steps involved in the machine learning the first step is always gathering the data so we should have an appropriate data to process the data so first we have to gather the data uh, whatever the processing should happen the data should be accurate so once the data has been taken we have to prepare the data like we have to clean up the data we, there might be like a lot of unwanted data so we have to clean up the data and remove unwanted things in the data preparation so next step is the data wrangling so it is like we have a, a raw data available here right so in that raw data what it does is it or it structures or it transforms the data where the machine can understand it so that's what this data wrangling does it the next is we have to analyze the data so we analyze the data after clean up and uh, uh, having this uh, uh, transformation of the data we analyze the particular data then what we do we choose a model for so there are lot of models available so in that we choose a model which is appropriate first we train the model say we have chosen a model 1 so we train the model with existing data and what we do we next test the model and we see the accuracy of that particular model okay and we evaluate the model so if the accuracy is low then again we go back to this training the model we choose the model train it until we get a appropriate model so once you test it and you have got the appropriate model then the next step is we deploy it so this is the machine learning life cycle it happens so uh, in order in order to uh, have a solution to our purpose we are choosing a natural language processing algorithm so what is uh, this nlp so this is like whatever we speak like normal english so the same yeah, what of the human language it keep process accordingly so that is where it shows you this natural process a uh, language processing so it bridges it bridges the uh, between the machines and people by enabling a computer to analyze what we have said so it it re recognizes the speech what we speak and process what the user meant it also to converse with the humans a program must understand the syntax like grammar and semantics and some kind of phrases conversion and context so all those things can be achieved with this national with this nlp so next the phases of nlp we have five phases of nlp so first one comes into the picture is the lexical analysis the collection of words and phrases in a language is referred as a lexicon so what it does we have a lot of text available where it divides the text into a paragraph a sentence and a words that is what we first initially do with this lexical analysis the next comes to syntax analysis unlike like all the software programs whatever we perform we have a syntax where we need to follow similarly we have a syntax for the human language we call it as a grammar so this analysis will happen on the grammatical of a sentences or a words whatever we have formed it and the next thing is semantic analysis so this is a process of looking for a meaning in a statement it it is like mostly concentrate on the like what is the meaning of the particular statement say for example i say the mango ate apple so the syntax is correct the grammatically it is correct but do you think it is a logical no it is a illogical because mango will never eat an apple so those things the meaning of the sentence and all those things comes under the semantic analysis the next is your discourse analysis 
uh, this is like uh, say for example uh, it mainly focuses on the properties of the text say uh, he wanted that it means that is what that all depends on the previous sentences what it has been referred to so those kind of scenarios comes under this discourse analysis the next comes to pragmatic analysis this pragmatic analysis is uh, uh, is uses the set of rules to describe the cooperative dialogues it means the context basically it basically deals with the context of the sentence say for example uh, we say switch on the tv uh, we it can be in a request or an order it depends on the context what we are using whether it is in a request or an order so that comes under this pragmatic analysis so these are the main five phases of the nlp so how the data processing happens in nlp the first thing is we have a data acquisition so we have to have the data acquisition uh, complete data we have to have it and then we do some cleaning of the text and the third comes the pre processing the pre processing involves a uh, uh, lot many steps like for example uh, we have this punctuation marks spaces all those things have to be removed even we have a stop words like a and the so all those things also has have to be pre processed before we send it so all these things comes under this pre processing the next is this feature engineering so this is a process of extracting meaningful information from the raw data to make it usable for the machine learning models so it it, it converts whatever the raw data into what the machine can learn so the next is the modeling so here you have to choose a model which is appropriate as per our requirement so once the model has been chosen we evaluate the particular model so based on the evaluation of the model if the model is proper we or if it is not proper we have to improve the model so what we do again we do this cycle pre processing then the future engineering then we choose a one more model and then we evaluate so this cycle repeats so once we have got the appropriate model and evaluation is proper we deploy the model so once that up, uh, deployment has been done we monitor and model up and update the model so like we, this is called the training of the model so this is how our data processing happens in nlp so the next will be continuing thanks chandan so this is the topic we have uh, to be continued the automation challenges and solutions which is the robot framework let's start with the introduction to the robot framework as you all know even a layman can understand this uh, robot framework syntax and it's very simple to use so currently like uh, we have the test data which is the test data syntax then the robot framework so in the back end we have the test library apis designed for the running of the robot framework then we have the test libraries such as uh, selenium and swing and also the final thing is the application interfaces so the application interfaces here it's the system under test so it is the system where we are implementing the test case and executing so this is the sample rfw the robot framework sample test case overview so in the settings section initially we would we would have a documentation thing wherein uh, that would represent the exact intention of the test case then we have the library so library usually it will be the dot py files for example in this case we will be using a calculator library and next part will be the test cases so here it will be the high level case wherein uh, what the user has to do and what he wants it to wanted to achieve it so like it's a sample addition test case basically if you see given calculator has been cleared so when the user types an input and he pushes the equals and the result is 2 so basically this will be followed up by the keywords keywords are nothing but the test steps so it will be for the user or a new person to understand once he uses this keywords in this format so as we can see the first step will would be like the calculator has been cleared so here the user pushes the button c then user types so next the typing will be done by the user with an expression then 
once that expression is like one plus one so he pushes the button equal to and the final result would be the dollar result which will be the two value so overall this is the format wherein a, a sample robot test case can be written using an enormous amount of libraries and the syntax is very clean so let's go through here what are resources and variables Basically, the resource and variable files are used for scalability by maintaining reusable code. Usually, in the test case when we are writing, so it would be it might become clumsy. So, if we have the resource files, we can just import those resource files in our test case and try to execute. So, variables are used as follows. So, unlike other programming languages, we have the list variable which is an array, so denoted by at a var then a dictionary variable. Usually, a dictionary variable will be a key value pair. So if you see here the ampersand with the variable, so this is the syntax. Then we have the built-in variables like current directory and execution directory. And also sometimes we would have the runtime variables like the debug file and the output directory. So basically it depends on the user requirement and his input. Let's go to this conditional access in the robot file. So first and foremost, we have the tags. Tax is a, of like a very generic purpose to identify the test case. Like say if you have a particular feature ID, so it that denotes the test case, and that would be treated as a different from other features. So that uh, uh, more likely tags are helpful in that case. So usually we use the force tags for the test case writing. So then we have the conditional access like if else if then else so again it depends on the user conditions wherein now when once the test case is written based on his requirement he can have a if condition like say if the first step fails just skip to the third step or to the next step so such kind of statements are easily available and used within the robot framework then we have the run keyword if then run keyword unless kind of conditional access also we have some types of like skip if skip so basically if at all we want to skip a particular step and just navigate to the end result so everything is accommodated here so this is a very clean syntax in the robot framework yeah as you all are aware yeah so why we are uh, like dealing with a and ml concept basically it is to solve our real world automation problem so basically, so some of the solutions which can be given for these problems are like auto identifying keywords in the robot framework. So here the natural language processing help would be taken and we will be using that as well. Then preparing data set accordingly. So this also involves the machine learning concept. Also the user needs to provide the input steps. So it would be as per the user requirement what he exactly needs, which is called, the, called as the training data then keywords will be automatically fetched from the data set so overall dimensions what we can see is the robot framework the nlp and the combination of artificial intelligence just smooths the user experience this is the sample flow wherein the steps are involved once the user has a text file as an input and he gets the robot test case as the output so let's begin with the first process so the first process is tokenization so tokenization here, the large chunks of data, basically the unstructured data, the natural language text will be converted into huge chunks of data and it would be of discrete elements. For example, a text like a data string can be converted into numerical representation, which is easily understood by the machine learning language. Then we have the feature extraction. So here in the feature extraction, basically whatever the numbering we would have given uh, from the output, which is the system has received. So the additional weights would be assigned in this feature extraction process. Then we have the model training. So the model training uh, has a lot of different models which has to be used by the user. Basically, uh, some three types, uh, if we can tell is like, first we have the text uh, classification, then question answering, then machine learning translation. The next process would be the fine tuning. So basically in the fine tuning process, the computer or the system understands the converted data, the machine language data and processes it. And also it's a process of retraining the pre-trained data and using the user's custom values. Then the next step would be the model specialized to target data or task. So here in the back end, so it will be identifying the required data and that will be used here. And further, the data obtained, if it is a valid one and the proper one, then we would have the user would receive the valid output as the robot test case output. 
else if there are some issues with the user output then again the process is continued with the pre-process and cleaning wherein the unwanted data and text is removed here and again this overall uh, processes uh, follows up and again the entire uh, processes or uh, leads into the robot test case output <coughs> conclusion so yeah what uh, artificial intelligence is doing so basically, if you can see artificial intelligence and robot pro process automation and machine learning can transform time consuming and error prone manual tasks to automated ones, which is very more likely in the real world scenarios and streamline for simplicity than improving end to end service. Intelligence also needs to be smart to drive the change and no person wants to write a huge uh, lines of code and worry about it. And also implementation needs to be powerful enough to re coordinate the responses and adaptations. Summary. So basically whatever solution we have given here, so we are using in our Nokia products. So as we know, Nokia products mainly deals in the technologies like 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G, where a lot of regression test cases has to be done to ensure the quality. And this would be of like multiple features and over 200 to 300 test cases. So those things cannot be manually done. So the automation is the key here. So this solution or the tool simplifies the efforts spent in testing the creating the test scripts to execute test cases. Even the customer cases can be automated faster with the help of this solution. So for our users or yeah, all the people, yeah, these are the references for the robot framework guide. So these are the references which can a user can check and uh, utilize in his uh, daily test case execution or his implementation using the robot framework. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any questions? If yes, please raise your hand and then volunteer will approach you. Okay. As I understand, this tool is already created. Is it possible to see some like proper examples of uh, its usage? Oh uh, yeah, actually this is in a beta version, so still we haven't. Uh, we are we are actually doing a lot of testing here, so we it's in uh, design phase kind of a thing. So beta version is still is ready, and we are just doing a test testing over here. So once uh, it has been completed, then maybe uh, we could do it. But right now it is not uh, possible to show any demo. Okay, thank you very much. I guess there are no more questions. So thank you very much for this online transmission. And uh, thank you, people here on the thank you. in the room. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.